Hello everyone, this is Ali Nassay with another Opturation Update tutorial. Today I wanted to talk about the basic versus the advanced hydraulic condensation technique. The original obturation technique that I developed for the bioceramic sealer, and it dates back about five years and you may have seen in my previous videos, is now considered the advanced hydraulic condensation technique. In this technique, the sealer is injected into the coronal two-thirds of the root canal directly from the BC sealer syringe, and then a bioceramic, uh, uh, a bioceramic coated cone is cemented into place to full length. This technique works great if you have a microscope or uh, you have some high magnification, and so you can see basically how much sealer is being injected into the root canal. However, if you don't have high magnification or good visualization of the syringe's tip, it's very difficult to see how much sealer is actually ending up in the root canal. If you inject too much sealer, your master cone may hang up high and can end up with a short fill. As a result, I've come up with a workaround solution to address this problem, and I'm calling this the basic endosequence obturation technique. Now, I call this the basic technique because it does not require any magnification and is attainable by everyone, including non-specialists. In fact, I recommend this technique now over the advanced technique as it is more user-friendly and safer to employ. So what is the basic hydraulic condensation technique? Basically, after you've completed the instrumentation uh, using a constant tapered file such as the endosequence file or your instrumentation system of choice, you fit your master gutta percha cone to full length and then confirm the seeding of the cone all the way to the apex. You can confirm this using a radiograph, which I always recommend. You then deposit a little bit of the sealer into the bioceramic sealer's dispensing tip. Now the BC sealer comes in a syringe and it has a dispensing tip for injecting directly into the canal, but instead of it injecting directly into the canal, as in the case of the advanced technique, for the basic technique you inject only a little bit into the dispensing tip and then you dip your master file, the last file that you use to finish the canal preparation with, into the dispensing uh, tip's uh, uh, reservoir, and thus you coat the cone. Now it's important to make sure that your file is clean, and that's why I also recommend after you've completed the instrumentation and have fitted, uh, found your master cone, then it's always a good idea to let your master file and master cone submerge it into full strength bleach for about a minute in order to clean the surface. Now, after you've had a clean uh, master file uh, and have dried the canal, you coat the master file with the sealer, and then you proceed to coat the canal walls by manually seating this file to the full working length. Now, some counterclockwise rotation by hand is recommended at this time to help spread out the sealer evenly against the root canal walls. You can then insert the gutta percha cone all the way to the apex. If you have an oval shaped canal with lots of space on the sides of your master cone, alternatively, you may also coat the gutta percha cone before cementing it into full length. And if you still have a lot of space, you can add additional cones uh, to fill that space without needing to laterally condense it. After the cones are seeded, you then sear the gutta percha at the orifice level using a high energy heat, heat source such as the Endo Pro 270 uh, or a touch and heat or a system B. Uh, I prefer the, two, uh, the Endo Pro 270 because the endo sequence gutta percha cone is a higher molecular density and you want to reach the highest level of heat to sear off very smoothly. Then you proceed to condense the gutta percha at the level of the orifice using a condenser. After the condensation is complete, you can then remove the excess sealer efficiently using an ultrasonic and water. 
Now, some people ask me over the internet by email, what should I do if I don't have an ultrasonic? And my usual answer is, well, buy an ultrasonic. But I understand that some people may not have use for an ultrasonic other than this step. Uh, however, I must say that I do believe that everyone should use an ultrasonic if they are doing endodontics because there is far more use of ultrasonic at different levels of the procedure than just cleaning the sealer at the very end. But I can understand. If you do not have an ultrasonic, then use a cotton pellet with some water. Now, I use the Varios 350 with the 14D tip, uh, and, but I make sure not to touch the gutta percha with the ultrasonic tip, and I'm only running the ultrasonic tip around the walls of the chamber and against the dentin, and that is enough to create waves with the water to wash out the sealer. Now, I wanted to make a couple of points here. First, make sure that your cones are seated to the full working length at the time of fitting the cone. The fitting of the cone is an important part of the procedure and you have to make sure that they are fully seated. As I mentioned before, uh, you can use a, uh, a radiograph to confirm this. I also use locking pliers where I lock the cone at the reference point so that I make sure that after placement of the sealer that the cones are seated to that same length. Now, some people use the, the markings on the cones, the calibrations. Now, remember that although the endosequence get a perch of cones have markings and calibrations, the BC coated cones don't. And the, these BC coated cones are in fact the ones that I recommend to use in conjunction with the hydraulic condensation technique. I recommend the BC coated cones over the non-coated cones as recent studies have demonstrated improved bonding with the coated cones compared to non-coated cones. Furthermore, it's been shown historically that leakage occurs more readily between the gutta percha and the sealer interface rather than the sealer and the canal walls. So it's important to have a very good bond between the gutta percha and the sealer. And please remember that the gutta percha is a hydrophobic surface and the bioceramic sealer is a hydrophilic material. Therefore, you're not going to get a natural bond between the two, which is the reason why the BC coated cones are recommended for use in hydraulic condensation. Now, the idea is that the cone should seed all the way to the same length with the sealer in the canal as they did without the sealer. If you notice that the cones are hanging up high and they're not fully seated, then remove the cone at once and use the master file again to go back to the full length. This will clear the apex from any excess sealer. Then repeat the process again with a new master cone. If the cone hangs up high again, then you have to use a smaller size cone. Don't forget that the hydraulic condensation technique is a sealer-based obturation technique and a larger sealer interface should not be a problem in the case of a bioceramic cement. It would be a problem if you were using a resin or a ZOE-based cement, but it's not an issue if you're using a uh, bioceramic-based cement. Now, let's take a look at this basic obturation technique in a very easy, straightforward canine tooth. This is the kind of a case that everyone watching this video and doing endo is likely going to do and is able to do. I hope this case demonstrates the hydraulic condensation for you. This is the case of a maxillary right canine tooth. Following instrumentation with the endo sequence uh, instrumentation system, a size 60 endo sequence gutta percha cone is fitted to 26 millimeters, which is the working length of this tooth. After drying the canal, bioceramic sealer is dispensed into the dispensing tip, and the master apical file is then dipped into the dispensing tip of the syringe and after full coating, it is inserted into the canal to full working length and rotated in a counterclockwise direction. 
This facilitates the coating of the canal in a very clean and predictable manner. After coating the canal with the endosequence master file, the master cone is also in a similar fashion coated with the bioceramic sealer and slowly seated all the way to working length. The Endo Pro 270 is then used to sear off the gutta percha cone at the RFS level. A condenser of appropriate size, in this case a size 10 plugger, is used then to condense the gutta percha cone apically. Following condensation, ultrasonic and water is used to clean the remaining debris on the walls. Care should be taken not to disturb the gutta percha with the ultrasonic, but rather to only touch the dent in walls. A provisional is then placed in the access opening or the core could be placed at that time. This shows the final radiograph following obturation with the endosequence bioceramic sealer and gutta percha. Okay, I hope this clarifies some of the confusion around the basic hydraulic condensation technique as taught by Rearworld Endo. Please stay tuned for more tutorials soon on the Rearworld Endo website. This is Ali Nese, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful.